I'm Melissa. I'm Jam. And I'm a chemist. And I'm not. And welcome to Chemistry for Your Life. The podcast that helps you understand the chemistry of your everyday life. Okay, Jam, today we are going to respond to a question from listener and friend of this show. Okay. My sister and yours, just kidding, just mine, <laughs> Renee C. Renee. Okay. Awesome. This better be a good one. That was like quite an intro. She's got a lot of titles. So yeah, she does have a lot of titles. <laughs> she has a really cool job. Go back and listen to our episode about if the sea is rising and if we should be scared. Mm-hmm. But her question was, why is chocolate delicious? Okay. Okay. So what we're going to address here in this episode is what is chocolate? Okay. Why is chocolate delicious? Okay. Is white chocolate actually chocolate? Okay. Why is chocolate dangerous for dogs? Okay. I know a little bit about chocolate. Um, not so as much the like chemistry in depth, but I ended up attending a chocolate tasting pre COVID. Wasn't it nice when we could just all hang out in a room and taste stuff and not worry about anyone getting sick and, all that, but anyway. The I'll good say, old days. The good old days. Here's a question I have. Do scientists agree that chocolate is delicious? That seems like something that scientists need to figure out first. Well, we're not going to talk about necessarily the subjectivity about the deliciousness, but we are going to talk about some molecules in it that make us really like it. you crave it, kind of. Okay, got it. So that's how we're going to address that. Nice. But also, there's so much to the chemistry of chocolate that next week we're going to do another episode where we talk about why sometimes chocolate gets that weird white film on the outside of it. Okay. Yeah. When it's old or whatever. Mm-hmm. And we're going to talk about what makes American chocolate different than mm. other chocolates. Got it. Different meaning worse. <laughs> Just kidding. I mean, but no maybe. comment. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll go into the scientifics of that next week nice okay cool dude i'm pumped this is a great question i love this i'm ready to learn about this and i'm kind of creating some predictions in my mind i think a little bit okay well i think it's gonna be a fun kind of all this and more today (laughs) so we've got a lot coming at you (laughs) (laughs) so let's start first with what chocolate is okay okay it is a pod there's a cocoa pod with seeds in it Mm mm-hmm Kind of like an iPod. Like an iPod, except if you could break it open and the seeds to me look like giant garlic cloves. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. They're white and, but maybe kind of slimy a little bit. Mm-hmm. Slimy garlic cloves are white and about that shape, but a little bit bigger. Okay. I don't know. Can you think of something else that's similar to the cocoa, cocoa seed? Do you know what a cocoa seed looks like? I do. I've seen it. And isn't it called cacao, by the way? Oh, I think it is called cacao. I always mix those up. But Wait, I mean, maybe not. I think, I mean, certainly the word cocoa came from that. But um, yeah, it's kind of a, you know, it looks a little bit like the white part. It kind of reminds me of like orange, oranges. Like, Oh, yeah. The little sections of oranges when they have the white part mm-hmm. still on them. Although this is actually slimy, like you said. But it looks a little like oranges having the white stuff on it on the inside. Yeah, I think that's a good visual. So they take those seeds and they ferment them and mm-hmm. then they roast them. Nice, nice. And then they ground them up uh-huh. to make what's known as chocolate li- liqueur or liquor. Mm. I'm not really sure the proper way of saying it because I read it. Yeah. And the thing about that chocolate liqueur, liqueur, is that it has the chocolatey flavor, but it doesn't have the right amount of fat to eat as like eating chocolate. Okay. Interesting. Fat. So fat. Mm -hmm. And that fat that's in there is what's known as cocoa butter. Right. It's got triglycerides in it. Mm Mm-hmm. And so they actually separate out chemically Mm -hmm. the chocolate solids from the cocoa butter, the triglycerides Mm -hmm. from the fat. And that makes solid chocolate 
Mm -hmm. and cocoa butter. Right, right. So for the cocoa butter part of that, you can add it in to other chocolate liqueur to become eating chocolate with the right fat content. They basically increase the fat content so it's the right kind of eating chocolate and then they'll add a few other things to it maybe. Mm -hmm. And then with the cocoa solids, that becomes cocoa powder that they use in chocolate candy making shop types things mm -hmm. and they'll use it in drinking hot chocolate kind of cocoa. It, and is the butter, I, maybe this is wrong, but I thought the cocoa butter came from that white stuff. Is that correct? That is not my understanding. Whoa. My understanding is that they grind up the fermented pods and that the fermented roasted seeds and that is chocolate liquor and then, liqueur. and then they separate the butter out yes Whoa, okay different cool cool okay so that is the basics of cocoa okay. and chocolate okay now the cocoa butter is basically the foundation for white chocolate i have heard that and i've heard that white chocolate has zero cacao solids is that true that is true. Whoa. White chocolate is just cocoa butter, maybe some sugar, some dried milk, some vanilla for flavoring. Uh -huh. So it's made from the cacao seeds that are roasted. So I think it sort of does count as chocolate because it comes from those pods, the cacao pods. Uh -huh. But it doesn't have any of those chocolate solids in it. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. And because of that, it is missing some of the important molecules that give chocolate not only its flavor, but also its health benefits. Okay. So it is from the same plant. Right. But it is missing a key component. Right, right, right. And actually one paper I read said that they're trying, they have tried to make, quote, healthier, unquote, white chocolate that adds some of these beneficial molecules back in which kind of makes me laugh because if you're trying to be healthy white chocolate's probably not the way to go <laughs> right yeah or it's like get your healthy stuff somewhere else it's like have a salad and then have some white chocolate totally fine <laughs> you know <laughs> yeah so that's the beginning answer to is white chocolate actually chocolate and what is chocolate right right okay i'm with you but let's get into why chocolate is delicious to us. Why some people, most people perceive chocolate to be delicious. Yeah, it's got such a unique taste, but it's also, I mean, so many desserts have some version of chocolatey something in it. It's like, yes, it is kind of number one MVP of dessert. There was a chocolate scientist who said he will give his students chocolate and tells them to describe it and they say it tastes like chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> like usually that's the response that he gets, <laughs> which makes me laugh. That's good. <laughs> so I feel like I would do that and then feel like, oh, that was stupid. Like I would say it <laughs> and then once I say the word it tastes like chocolate, I'd say chocolate, I'd be like, uh gosh dang it like that was but how else do you describe it you know yeah i don't know man that's crazy so each chocolate square mm -hmm. contains about 800 different molecules that give it the flavor and texture that we love 800 wow i know these include caffeine which can be addictive nice. but actually it's a lot less caffeine than many people think hmm but it does have a very similar structure. It's basically the same structure as caffeine with one of the hydrogens subbed out for a carbon group, mm -hmm. one carbon with some hydrogens around it. But because of that one change molecularly, mm -hmm. it gives a smoother stimulation. So it's still a stimulant, makes us feel awake, binds to those same things. Check out our episode on why caffeine makes you not sleepy. Mm -hmm. So, but it makes you less jitter, jittery. So it's still a stimulant, but it's a more smooth stimulant. Got it. Okay, cool. It also has phenylethylamine, which is, that's a big scary word. <laughs> yeah. It basically is similar to amphetamines, oh. which we know are addictive and also stimulants. Yeah. 
when you say that word, I, it had ended up having about like two more syllables than I expected. Like you were still <laughs> saying the word by the time I thought you would already have been done two syllables ago. Oh, welcome to organic chemistry, man. <laughs> it just, those go on and on. <laughs> and there's also a, a cannabinoid present in chocolate which is in the same family as the active ingredient in marijuana. Ah. Plus there's sugar, which of course is delicious and may or may not have addictive properties, but we love it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And there's all, there's milk and possibly some vanilla flavoring, all the fats from the cocoa butter. So we have all kinds of things in there. Okay. Plus... Are you ready for this? Yes. There's more mm. weird. Okay. There are polyphenols. Okay. Again, the return of polyphenols. Okay. Interesting. They're back. We talked about them in the Tans episode and I think also in the maple syrup episode. Uh-huh. So go check those out. And they, those are the naturally occurring in plants. They're abundant in even in chocolate, Mm -hmm. and they are thought to, this is a new fact about it, contribute to the antioxidant properties that chocolate has. And to learn more about antioxidants, we also did an episode about that. This is pretty fun. We're starting to get a pretty expansive library. I was going to say, yeah, it's like (laughs) happening more and more frequently where a topic brushes up against a little bit of a topic or two, or in this case, like three (laughs) that we have already touched on, which is cool. Yes. So all these things combine together to make chocolate delicious. And a lot of these things are what is missing from white chocolate. You know, there's no polyphenols to give us the antioxidant properties. There's none of these stimulants. There's none of the, these things that will give it its subtle flavor. These 800 different molecules. It's basically just triglycerides from what I could tell Mm. in the cocoa butter. Mm. And then you mix it with other stuff. So it doesn't have this complexity of flavor. Right, right, right. Got it. Okay. So that's the very basics on what chocolate is. Okay. There's a lot more chemistry to talk about with chocolate. We can talk about the chemistry of tempering chocolate, and then we're going to touch more next week on some of those other things about chocolate. Mm -hmm. But I wanted you to take a stab at giving that back to me, and then I'd reward... You with a fun fact about what makes, I don't know if this is fun. It's kind of a sad fact about what makes chocolate dangerous for dogs. Okay. Got it. Okay, sweet. So chocolate comes from the cacao pod. Mm -hmm. They take the um, cacao things out of the pod. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I, I want to say they're called seeds. I, I think some people call them nibs. Oh no, that's something different. Oh, is that after that's they've already processed after, them? It's after winnowing that nibs are, I think, obtained. Wow. This so is... I didn't go too in depth onto okay. that. So this is just the little seeds before anything's happened. This is just the white, fleshy seeds. So they take the seeds, they ferment them. Mm-hmm. Then they roast them. Mm-hmm. Then they crush them down. Mm-hmm. And then they separate the fats, the butter part from the cacao solids. Right. Using something called chemistry, which is a complete mystery to this <laughs> podcast, but you know. Oh, also I was going to say that that chocolate liquor is close to solid at room temperature. So I I think they do have to heat it up probably to do some of that extraction. Oh, gotcha. I don't know why they call it the chocolate liquor. Because when I think of liquor, I think of like a liquid. Yeah. But I don't know. Huh. That's weird. I could almost say like what they call it, like just concentrate or something like that. But Or pure. Yeah. I don't know. Who knows? I don't know. So it's in this liqueur form and they and that's when they separate out the cocoa butter from the cacao solids right that is the when it's in that semi-solid needs to be heated up that's when they separate out the 
bats from the solid. Right. Got it. Okay, cool. So then they put the solids into, you know, our various ways of eating chocolate with some of the cocoa butter. And depending on what you're eating, there might be some milk and also there's always sugar, maybe some other flavors or whatever. But in that cacao solid already, there's a lot of already chemical stuff going on. That's cool. Lots of different Mm -hmm. kinds of molecules um, and some caffeine that's slightly different and gives a smoother um, stimulation from it instead of a punchy, suddenly awake (laughs) vibe Mm -hmm. that we get from coffee. And that one's called theobromine. Theobromine. And there's also polyphenols. Mm -hmm. And that has some of the cool antioxidant properties that are nice to have in chocolate. Mm -hmm. And oh, what else did you say? I'm kind of forgetting now. That's okay. We got a I lot think you got most deep. of them. <laughs> right. There is also um, phenylethylamine, which is similar to amphetamines and a cannabinoid. Oh, but there's yeah, also, yeah, yeah. you know, 795 other different molecules mm-hmm. present. So those are just ones that I thought I pulled out. I thought were interesting and yeah. contributed, but to the flavor and to the feeling that we get of why we like it so much. Right. But there's so much more to that chocolate flavor than just those. There's 800 molecules in a chocolate square. Yeah. So it's very complicated. And we will name all of them one by one starting now. (laughs) Absolutely not. That would not be the fun podcast. (laughs) Oh, gosh. Um, So you got most of them. I'm impressed. And then I guess this is the last thing to, to kind of finish my summary is that then white chocolate has is mostly just the cocoa butter mm-hmm. with some other stuff in it and is a lot less complex and does not have some of the coolest chocolate elements to it. Right. So, bummer. So, yeah, when people say, is white chocolate real chocolate? I mean, it depends on which... You could argue both sides. Mm-hmm. It depends on what you're defining as chocolate. Right. You know? Right. So... Also, I looked up just a quick Google search, mm-hmm. the the definition of a cacao nib. Mm. And so it's those those beans or those seeds that are when they're crushed. So I guess that's what it means after winnowing. So it's like little pieces of that would maybe be it. Got it. But when they're crushed, not so, so small to be the liqueur is my understanding. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. Yikes. Some chocolatier from Switzerland is going to send us an Instagram message about how wrong we are or something. <laughs> <laughs> I'd love to hear from some chocolatiers about how they make chocolate. When my mom and I were in Switzerland, we watched a chocolate show and it was really beautiful and delicious. Wow. Yeah. I mean, it's cool. That there's people who this is their area. This is their expertise. So that's kind of awesome. So sorry right, guys, but also very cool. And let's talk. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Just We're just doing a quick overview. We'd love to be corrected or taught more about the details. Yes. Okay, so now let's talk about why chocolate is lethal for dogs. Okay, okay. It's actually because of that theobromine, that caffeine-like substance that's in chocolate. Okay, interesting. So this is toxic actually to humans too in the right amounts, but it has to be crazy amounts, kind of like how water can kill you if you have a ton or caffeine Mm -hmm. can kill you if you have a ton of it, you know? Mm -hmm. Or if you're submerged in the water for too long, that's also not good. Yeah, definitely not good. (laughs) So in dogs, they have a much lower tolerance, I think because it affects their central nervous system like ours, but they have... I guess such smaller systems that it just kind of overwhelms them. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so it stimulates their system 
And then they have these negative side effects. So they have some vomiting or digestive issues, and then they can have twist, twitching muscles and all this stuff. And then Dang. eventually they probably have a heart attack. Wow. So, and the, the theobromine is, it's metabolized slowly, so it can take about a day for the effects to appear. Mm -hmm. And it can take several days for recovery. And there's not really an antidote, but usually they just induce vomiting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the lethal dose of theobromine for dogs is about 100 to 500 milligrams per kilogram. Okay. So in for our American listeners, that is about 100 to 500 milligrams per per two and a 2.2 pounds. Is that what we said? 2.2 mm -hmm. pounds. Yeah. Yeah. So jam knew that conversion off the top of his head. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, if you have a small dog, the effect could be significantly lar larger than if you have a, a 70 pound dog, it's going to affect their systems differently. The larger the dog, the more they'll be able to handle it. Yeah. Yeah. But just for reference, you know, not all chocolates have the same amount of theobromine. Cocoa powder contains a lot more than milk chocolate, you know. Uh -huh. Cocoa powder has about 10 times as much theobromine as milk chocolate does. Okay. So just let's say your dog eats half a cup of cocoa powder. Okay. Okay. For a two-pound dog, the lethal dose would be... Probably around 100. Could They could tolerate up to 500, but 100 is where it starts getting dicey uh -huh. milligrams for them. Okay. So if they had half a cup of, cup of cocoa powder, that would be 1,000 milligrams. So, so that's 10 times. Yeah, well above. Well above. Oh, yikes. Dang it, dude. But if you had a dog that was 20 pounds... Mm -hmm then they would probably be able to handle half a cup just fine. If you're like my roommates and you have an 80 pound dog, <laughs> half a cocoa cup of cocoa powder might not hit them even at all. And sometimes what science can't always explain is how my 30 something pound beagle ate an entire chocolate bar one time <laughs> and was fine. Although I think he actually threw it up himself. Anyway, mm. well, some... also, if it was milk chocolate, it would only be two milligrams per gram. That was probably only like a 10 gram bar. So it's probably only 20 milligrams. So it's probably nowhere close to the lethal. Nice. Dose. That explains it. Also, he just, he, nothing will kill him probably is the other thing I've, I've come up with. <laughs> that, that might be part of it too, but also it probably helped that he probably didn't have much the theobromine in there. Yeah. He probably threw it up before it could fully be digested also yeah <laughs> so definitely not giving chocolate to dogs yeah there is some some kind of theobromine free chocolate that you can give to dogs mm -hmm. but better to just avoid it and if anything happens to your dog maybe don't panic depending on their size but get help quickly because mm -hmm. it can be dangerous dang that's crazy also I would not have predicted that was the part of chocolate that caused the problem. Like the caffeine part related to that section of all the many things that are in I know chocolate. You said 800. It's like, but that's just, that one is also the one that's just strange to me. I wonder how caffeine affects our system. After reading this, I wondered mm -hmm. if it had a similar effect, but we don't feed our dogs caffeine very much yeah. or Maybe it's easier to process because that one methyl group is missing. You know, yep. I don't know. My dog has also drank an entire cup of coffee and then threw it up. So <laughs> wow. maybe he, he keeps protecting himself by just getting rid of it all. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, he just does the hard work for you. Yeah. But <laughs> so that is the chemistry of chocolate. Wow, dude, crazy. I'm interested in this. I'm, I, wow, that's complicated. There's a lot more there than I expected. There is, and we didn't even scratch the surface of, we'll scratch the surface next week, but this week we didn't even scratch the surface of how chocolate is tempered and the crystal structure of chocolate is wild. So, mm -hmm. Well, awesome. I'm excited. These couple of chocolate episodes sound like they're going to be pretty sweet. Uh -huh. um, <laughs> did anything sweet happen in your week this week, Melissa? Well, yes, Jim, you already know the answer to this question. Uh, leading the witness. <laughs> but 
very exciting thing happened this week, actually, is me and my significant other got engaged. Nice. Congrats. And actually, Jam was there. It was under the ruse of a fun trip with the four of us up to Oklahoma to Mm -hmm. a place called Turner Falls that I love. I love waterfalls. So I was really excited. We've been trying to go since last March when COVID happened and we're finally safely able to go. Yes. And it was very fun and sweet and special. So yay. Dude, awesome. Congrats. Yes, it was very sweet. It was cool to get to witness that. I'm very excited for you guys. I'm very excited too. And actually because of COVID and just the way things are right now, we're thinking of getting married pretty quick and having it mostly on Zoom. So you'll probably get that news again sometime (laughs) soon. So yay, this is very exciting. And thanks for taking such cute pictures, Jam. It was really nice to get to share that with someone. And it was beautiful. It was a perfect background for that. Oh, dude, yeah, it was a nice day. Great weather, cool waterfalls. Yeah, that was awesome. And we had fun exploring the park together also even before that happened. So that probably would have been my happy thing from the week either way. (laughs) Totally. And I'm not going to share one because I cannot, I cannot beat you getting engaged, but I'll just say that it was also cool for me to get to hang out with you guys. And if, even if y'all didn't get engaged, I probably would have said the same thing. I'd be like, Oh, we got to go to this awesome waterfall and walk around this park. So definitely, definitely, um, was cool all around. It was very, yeah, really fun. Definitely the highlight of our week. So yay, I'm getting married to Mason. He's great. You guys have heard me talk about him some on the show already. When we wrapped up the last year, he's been such an awesome support system to me in my school and through my mom being sick. And he also loves the podcast and helps us out with this whenever he can too. So yeah, yay. Thanks so much, Mason, for being awesome and a great person and i'm so excited to marry you chemistry for your life approved yay (laughs) so that is that's my great news and i was so excited to share with all of you listeners because it feels like y'all are our friends just that we haven't met yet so i Mm -hmm. i was thinking it would be really fun to share this with y'all so thanks for always being excited and caring about our life events you guys we've heard a lot of good things on that part of our show each week and Thanks for coming and listening and learning about chocolate. I'm so excited to share more about this topic next week. And I'm so thankful for you guys. We both are because we literally could not do this show without you. So thank you so much. Absolutely. And thank you for teaching us, Melissa. And if you guys have ideas or questions, things you wonder about in your everyday life that may or may not be chemistry, please ask us. We'd love to hear your ideas. You can reach out to us on Gmail, Twitter, Instagram, or Facebook at Chem for Your Life. That's Chem, F O R your life to share your thoughts and ideas. If you'd like to help us keep our show going and contribute to cover the costs of making it, go to ko-fi.com slash chem for your life and donate the cost of a cup of coffee. And don't forget, from now until the end of May, if you go to our Ko-Fi and sign up for a monthly subscription of any amount, we will send you a, an exclusive sticker that's super cool, designed by a friend of ours, and also a note to say thank you from Melissa and I. But if you're not able to donate, you can still help us by subscribing on your favorite podcast app and rating and writing a review on Apple Podcasts. That also helps us to share chemistry with even more people. This episode of Chemistry for Your Life was created by Melissa Collini and Jam Robinson. References for this episode can be found in our show notes or on our website. Jam Robinson is our producer and we'd like to give a special thanks to S. Navarro and V. Garza who reviewed this episode.